Today, we will learn about simple interest. There are many festivals celebrated in your school or house. Many times, we don't have the necessary things required for celebration with us. So, we borrow them for some time. Example, water jars, tents, speakers, etc. When we return these items back, we pay a fee for these. Similarly, sometimes it becomes necessary to borrow money just as we borrow these items. Like if a person wants to start a business but doesn't have the sufficient money, then he borrows money for some time from a bank or a person. The money which is borrowed is called as the principal. Before borrowing, some terms and conditions like time and fee are set between the borrower and the lender. The person uses the money borrowed for a fixed period of time. When the borrower returns the principal amount, then along with the principal he needs to pay a fee for the time period for which he has borrowed the money. This fee returned along with the principal is called the interest. On adding the interest and the principal, we calculate the total money which needs to be returned. This money is known as amount. The return period and total interest are mentioned in the terms and conditions. Generally, the interest for a period of one year is expressed in percent, which we call the rate of interest. If it is given that the rate of interest is 8% per year or 8% yearly and the principal is rupees 100, then at the end of the year, along with rupees 100, one needs to give 8% of rupees 100, which is equal to rupees 8 extra. Here, the amount is equal to 100 plus 8, which is 108 to be given. Now let's understand it in a better way with an example. Prakash borrows rupees 20,000 from Ramesh for three years. While taking the loan, they agree on the condition that Prakash will pay 12% interest per year to Ramesh for using his money. Let us find how much money Prakash has to return to Ramesh after three years. Here, rate of interest is 12% per year. Can you tell me what this means? Think for a while. You got it right. The rate of interest of 12% or 12 by 100 per year means Prakash will pay an interest of rupees 12 yearly on rupees 100. We can say that for a period of one year, he will pay an interest of rupees 12 by 100 on rupee 1. Similarly, for a period of one year on 20,000 rupees, he has to pay rupees 20,000 multiplied by 12 by 100, which is equal to rupees 2,400 as an interest. But this is only for one year. Prakash has borrowed money for three years. Therefore, for three years, the interest will be 20,000 multiplied by 12 by 100 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 2,400 into 3, which is equal to 7,200 rupees. Thus, the amount to be returned after three years is 20,000 principal plus rupees 7,200 interest, which is equal to rupees 27,200. There is an important point to be noted here. The principal is same for all three years. If principal is same for every year, then interest will also be the same. Interest calculated in this manner is called simple interest. As you can see, to find the simple interest, we have multiplied principal, rate of interest and time. Can you formulate an expression for calculating simple interest? Think for a while. Absolutely right. This will be simple interest is equal to principal into rate of interest into time. If we represent simple interest as I, principal with P, rate of interest with R percent or R by 100 and time with T, then we can write the formula to calculate simple interest that is I is equal to P into R by 100 into T or PRT by 100. Remember that time should always be expressed in years. If time is given in months, then convert it into years by dividing it by 12. Similarly, you should know that if we know the value of any three quantities among these four, 
then we can find the value of the fourth unknown quantity by slightly modifying the formula. Also, if the amount is represented as A, then we can write the amount as A is equal to P plus I. Today, we have learned simple interest. In the next video, we will solve some examples related to it.